In computability theory, Kleene's recursion theorems are a pair of fundamental results about the application of computable functions to their own descriptions. The theorems were first proved by Stephen Kleene in 1938 and appear in his 1952 book Introduction to Metamathematics. A related theorem which constructs fixed points of a computable function is known as Rogers's theorem and is due to Hartley Rogers, Jr. 1967. The recursion theorems can be applied to construct fixed points of certain operations on computable functions, to generate quines, and to construct functions defined via recursive definitions. Topic. Notation The statement of the theorems refers to an admissible numbering phi display style var phi of the partial recursive functions such that the function corresponding to index e display style e is phi e display style var phi underscore e in programming terms e Display style e represents a program and phi e display style var phi underscore e represents the function computed by this program. If f display style f and g display style g are partial functions on the natural numbers, the notation f G display style f simic g indicates that for each n either f n display style f n and g n display style g n are both defined and are equal, or else f n display style f n and G N display style G N are both undefined. Topic: Rogers's fixed point theorem. Given a function f display style f, a fixed point of f display style f is an index e display style e such that phi e phi f e display style var phi underscore e simic var phi underscore f e Rogers Rogers 1967 section 11.2 describes the following result as a simpler version of Kleene's second recursion theorem. Rogers's fixed point theorem. If f display style f is a total computable function, it has a fixed point. Topic: <laughs> Proof of the fixed point theorem. The proof uses a particular total computable function h Display style h defined as follows: given a natural number x, display style x, the function h, display style h, outputs the index of the partial computable function that performs the following computation: given an input y, display style y, first attempt to compute phi x x display style var phi underscore x x if that computation returns an output e display style e then compute phi e y display style var phi underscore e y and return its value if any thus for all indices x display style x of partial computable functions if 
phi x x display style var phi underscore x x is defined then phi h x phi phi x x display style var phi underscore h x simic var phi underscore var phi underscore x x if phi x x display style var phi underscore x x is not defined then phi h x display style var phi underscore h x is a function that is nowhere defined the function h display style h can be constructed from the partial computable function g x y display style g x y described above and the smn theorem for each x display style x h x display style h x is the index of a program which computes the function y g x y display style y maps to g x y to complete the proof let f display style f be any total computable function and construct h display style h as above let e display style e be an index of the composition f h display style f circ h which is a total computable function then phi h e phi phi e e display style var phi underscore h e simic var phi underscore var phi underscore e e by the definition of h display style h but because e display style e is an index of f h display style f circ h phi e e equals f h e display style var phi underscore e e equals f circ h e and thus phi phi e e phi f h e display style var phi underscore var phi underscore e e simic var phi underscore f h e by the transitivity of display style simic this means phi h e phi f h e display style var phi underscore h e simic var phi underscore f h e hence phi n phi f n display style var phi underscore n simic var phi underscore f n for n equals h e display style n equals h e this proof is a construction of a partial recursive function which implements the y combinator topic fixed point free functions a function f display style f such that phi e phi f e display style var phi underscore e not simic var phi underscore f e for all e display style e is called fixed point free 
The fixed point theorem shows that no computable function is fixed point free, but there are many non computable fixed point free functions. Arslanov's completeness criterion states that the only recursively enumerable Turing degree that computes a fixed point free function is zero feet, the degree of the halting problem. Soar 1987, p. 88. Topic. Clean second recursion theorem The second recursion theorem is a generalization of Rogers's theorem with a second input in the function. One informal interpretation of the second recursion theorem is that it is possible to construct self-referential programs, see application to quines, below. The second recursion theorem. For any partial recursive function, Q X Y display style Q X Y there is an index P display style P such that Phi P lambda Y Q P Y Display style var phi underscore p simic lambda y q p y. The theorem can be proved from Rogers's theorem by letting f p display style f p be a function such that phi f p y equals q p y. Display style var phi underscore f p y equals q p y. A construction described by the SMN theorem. One can then verify that a fixed point of this f display style f is an index p display style p as required. The theorem is constructive in the sense that a fixed computable function maps an index for Q into the index P. Topic. Comparison to Rogers's theorem Clean second recursion theorem and Rogers's theorem can both be proved, rather simply, from each other Jones, 1997, p. 229-230. However, a direct proof of Kleene's theorem, Kleene 1952, p. 352 to 353, does not make use of a universal program, which means that the theorem holds for certain subrecursive programming systems that do not have a universal program. Topic: <laughs> Application to quines. A classic example using the second recursion theorem is the function q x y equals x display style q x y equals x. The corresponding index p display style p in this case yields a computable function that outputs its own index when applied to any value Cutland 1980, p. 204. When expressed as computer programs, such indices are known as quines. The following example in LISP illustrates how the p p in the corollary can be effectively produced from the function q q the function S11 in the code is the function of that name produced by the SMN theorem. Q can be changed to any two-argument function. The results of the following expressions should be the same. Phi display style var phi p nil q p nil topic Application to elimination of recursion Suppose that G display style G and H display style H 
are total computable functions that are used in a recursive definition for a function f display style f f 0 y g y display style f 0 y simic g y f x plus 1 y h f x y x y Display style f x plus one y simic h f x y x y. The second recursion theorem can be used to show that such equations define a computable function, where the notion of computability does not have to allow a priori for recursive definitions. For example, it may be defined by mu recursion or by Turing machines. This recursive definition can be converted into a computable function. Phi f e x y display style varphi underscore f e x y that assumes e display style e is an index to itself to simulate recursion phi f e 0 y g y Display style varphi underscore f e zero y simic g y phi f e x plus one y h phi e x y x y Display style varphi underscore f e x plus one y simic h varphi underscore e x y x y. The recursion theorem establishes the existence of a computable function phi f display style varphi underscore f such that phi f x y phi f f x y display style varphi underscore f x y simic varphi underscore f f x y thus f display style f satisfies the given recursive definition topic Reflexive programming Reflexive, or reflective, programming refers to the usage of self-reference in programs. Jones 1997, presents a view of the second recursion theorem based on a reflexive language. It is shown that the reflexive language defined is not stronger than a language without reflection because an interpreter for the reflexive language can be implemented without using reflection, then, it is shown that the recursion theorem is almost trivial in the reflexive language. Topic. The first recursion theorem While the second recursion theorem is about fixed points of computable functions, the first recursion theorem is related to fixed points determined by enumeration operators, which are a computable analog of inductive definitions. An enumeration operator is a set of pairs a, n, where a is a code for a finite set of numbers and n is a single natural number. Often, n will be viewed as a code for an ordered pair of natural numbers, particularly when functions are defined via enumeration operators. Enumeration operators are of central importance in the study of enumeration reducibility. Each enumeration operator phi determines a function from sets of naturals to sets of naturals given by phi x equals n x a n element of phi display style phi x equals n mid exists a subset x a n in phi 
A recursive operator is an enumeration operator that, when given the graph of a partial recursive function, always returns the graph of a partial recursive function. A fixed point of an enumeration operator phi is a set f such that phi f equals f. The first enumeration theorem shows that fixed points can be effectively obtained if the enumeration operator itself is computable. First recursion theorem. The following statements hold. For any computable enumeration operator phi there is a recursively enumerable set f such that phi f equals f and f is the smallest set with this property. For any recursive operator psi there is a partial computable function phi such that psi phi equals phi and phi is the smallest partial computable function with this property. Equals Topic Example Equals like the second recursion theorem, the first recursion theorem can be used to obtain functions satisfying systems of recursion equations. To apply the first recursion theorem, the recursion equations must first be recast as a recursive operator. Consider the recursion equations for the factorial function f f 0 equals 1 display style f 0 equals 1 f n plus 1 equals n plus 1 f n display style f n plus 1 equals n plus 1 c d o t f n the corresponding recursive operator phi will have information that tells how to get to the next value of f from the previous value However, the recursive operator will actually define the graph of f. First, phi will contain the pair 0 1 display style varnothing 0 1. This indicates that f 0 is unequivocally 1 and thus the pair 0 1 is in the graph of f. Next, for each n and m, phi will contain the pair n m n plus 1 n plus 1 m display style n m n plus 1 n plus 1 c d o t m this indicates that if f n is m then f n plus 1 is n plus 1 m so that the pair n plus 1 n plus 1 m is in the graph of f Unlike the base case f 0 equals 1, the recursive operator requires some information about f n before it defines a value of f n plus 1. The first recursion theorem in particular, part 1 states that there is a set f such that phi f equals f. The set f will consist entirely of ordered pairs of natural numbers, and will be the graph of the factorial function f, as desired. The restriction to recursion equations that can be recast as recursive operators ensures that the recursion equations actually define a least fixed point. For example, consider the set of recursion equations g 0 equals 1 display style g 0 equals 1 g n plus 1 equals 1 display style g n plus 1 equals 1 g 2 n equals 0 display style g 2 n equals 0 there is no function g satisfying these equations because they imply g 2 topic 1 and also imply g 2 0. Thus there is no fixed point g satisfying these recursion equations. It is possible to make an enumeration operator corresponding to these equations, but it will not be a recursive operator. Topic. Proof sketch for the first recursion theorem 
The proof of part 1 of the first recursion theorem is obtained by iterating the enumeration operator phi beginning with the empty set. First, a sequence fk is constructed for k equals 0 1 display style k equals 0 1 l dots let f0 be the empty set proceeding inductively for each k let fk plus 1 be f k phi f k display style f underscore k cup phi f underscore k finally f is taken to be f k display style big cup f underscore k the remainder of the proof consists of a verification that f is recursively enumerable and is the least fixed point of phi the sequence fk used in this proof corresponds to the clean chain in the proof of the clean fixed point theorem the second part of the first recursion theorem follows from the first part the assumption that phi is a recursive operator is used to show that the fixed point of phi is the graph of a partial function. The key point is that if the fixed point f is not the graph of a function, then there is some k such that fk is not the graph of a function. Topic. Comparison to the second recursion theorem Compared to the second recursion theorem, the first recursion theorem produces a stronger conclusion but only when narrower hypotheses are satisfied. Rogers 1967 uses the term weak recursion theorem for the first recursion theorem and strong recursion theorem for the second recursion theorem. One difference between the first and second recursion theorems is that the fixed points obtained by the first recursion theorem are guaranteed to be least fixed points, while those obtained from the second recursion theorem may not be least fixed points. A second difference is that the first recursion theorem only applies to systems of equations that can be recast as recursive operators. This restriction is similar to the restriction to continuous operators in the clean fixed point theorem of order theory. The second recursion theorem can be applied to any total recursive function. Topic: Generalized theorem. Anatoly Maltsev proved a generalized version of the recursion theorem for any set with a precomplete numbering. A Gödel numbering is a precomplete numbering on the set of computable functions so the generalized theorem yields the clean recursion theorem as a special case. Given a precomplete numbering nu display style nu then for any partial computable function f display style f with two parameters there exists a total computable function t display style t with one parameter such that n element of n new f n t n equals new t n Display style for all n in math b n nu circ f n t n equals nu circ t n. Topic. See also. Denotational semantics, where another least fixed point theorem is used for the same purpose as the first recursion theorem. Fixed point combinators, which are used in lambda calculus for the same purpose as the first recursion theorem.